I'm joined by Harry Littman of the Talking Feds YouTube channel and Talking Feds podcast. Harry, let's get right into it. Donald Trump is terrified about the sentencing date in the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case. It's currently scheduled for September 18th. Previously, Justice Mershon stated he's not moving that date. And Justice Mershon said multiple times, do not file anything requesting that the date be moved. My intention is to proceed with that sentencing date on September 18th, providing nothing changes in any kind of prior rulings uh, as a result of the absolute immunity challenge. So Donald Trump takes the do not as an invitation to request an adjournment of the September 18th sentencing date. Trump sent uh, a letter through his counsel, Todd Blanche, and the letter says not only move the sentencing date, but the letter also says prohibit the Manhattan District Attorney's Office from even filing any documents that reference the sentencing because that would be prejudicial to Donald Trump. It would hurt his feelings if they did that. And it's really in the letter. I mean, we could dig into just some of the language, you know, where they're saying, you know, the reputational interests that the Supreme Court was trying to protect of Donald Trump's means people shouldn't even hear negative things about him in court records. That's what they actually said in this letter. Mershon's yet to rule, despite somebody on social media claiming he made a ruling when I was like, show me the document and it wasn't there. But there's no ruling as of yet. Harry, what do you make of uh, this development. All right. So a few things. First, the confusion that I think you're uh, that somebody was just talking to you about. Trump tried to set this up with his third count of three motion to recuse, which uh, Mayor Chun was quick to deny. But then the first argument in the um, in, in this put off the sentencing is, well, this will get rid of the problems with your not having recused. What problems? There are no problems. Second, on your your notion of the it'll hurt his feelings. See, some some clerk on the Supreme Court uh, happily uh, earned his pay that day, coming up with the opprobrium of the so that he quotes the court as Trump saying it will subject him to the opprobrium, the sort of stench of being sentenced. But of course, that's what sentencing does. What's really going on here is every single time that the the prosecutor, including here, Bragg, but anywhere around the country, wants to move things up or cite the uh, public interest in knowing things. Trump screams, you're politicizing, you're politicizing. Here, we're going by the normal book. It's This is when it is. He actually put it back once so they could consider the immunity motion, which he's supposed to rule on September 16th, just before. But this is when it comes in its normal uh, time, if anything late. And this is and Trump's final argument is the only this is crass election interference. And why is that? Because it happens to fall before the election. That's all you can uh, really make uh, out of it. So he's accusing Mayor Chan for, with interfering with the election because he's just going about his business. There's an interesting dynamic, and it's the other part of his letter, Ben, which he's, he's making it clear that however the immunity argument, and that's his, that's his argument where he's saying, you should give me a whole new trial based on the Supreme Court immunity decision. Why should that matter with a, you know, a candidate, not a president paying hush money to a porn star? Well, because maybe there was evidence heard that shouldn't have been heard. Give me a new trial on that. He's going, he's saying he's going to appeal that, which he will. And if uh, Mayor Chun uh, turns him down, uh, as I think he would around September 16th, and he's going to try to piggyback this onto it. He's as much as saying so in the letter. So he's going to say, this is immunity. I get a right to uh, an interlocutory appeal because I have a right not to go to trial. And you have to take sentencing off. But if you think about it for a second, what's the interest in not having sentence pronounced, not having the words come from Mershon's mouth? It's very hard to see, right? There's nothing that really trenches on immunity there. But that's going to be the fight we'll see in the days, the one or two days 
before sentencing. I'm going out for sentencing, so I'm assuming he won't uh, he won't succeed. But that's his final gambit. He's basically taken arguments that haven't succeeded in the past and saying, based on them, uh, and because it would be election interference, don't sentence me at all. So what do you expect is going to happen? I mean, I think Justice Mershon yeah. still has to hear the absolute immunity uh, arguments. Trump submitted his briefing. Uh, the Manhattan District Attorney submitted their opposition. You and I covered that. So that will be heard. Is he going to rule, Harry, that one on the papers? Is he going to hold uh, an actual hearing on that? And then the, and then the ruling on that is very, is very shortly before the sentencing hearing. So you know, there could be a ruling and then get right into sentencing. Now, obviously, if the court finds that there was reversible error or finds that there's absolute immunity changes the dynamic of the underlying trial where Trump was convicted on the 34 separate felony counts, there's not going to be a sentencing because there's not going to be a case. But, you know, I thought there'll be a new trial yeah, or a new trial. Yeah. I thought the district attorney's argument, though, was very compelling. These are not official acts. They're not core constitutional functions. Even if they were official acts, this is um, you know, not reversible error. It was, it's, it's minor, if, if anything. Um, so what do you think is going to happen? All right. So here's how I think it plays out. And it's, 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 as you're saying, I think Mirchan says no new trial for you for the reasons you say, but I, but I want to add, you know, this is not a no brainer because of the breadth of the Supreme Court and their aspect of the holding completely superfluous to what they were saying, that you can't even have any evidence of an immune act. And there's going to be, uh, you know, wrestling over the conversation that while he's president in 2018, he has with Hope Hicks in the Oval Office. I think, as you do, Ben, that even if that shouldn't have come in, uh, and it, it was important evidence. The uh, the prosecutor called it devastating uh, in f- closing. But what was it for? It was for to show that they were all, you know, really alarmed when Stormy Daniels revelations came to the fore. Her co picks is there's plenty of other evidence there. So I think he will hold all if not if not rejected all the way on the merits, say harmless error and move to the 18th. And let me get to that to in, in a second, because I think Trump will immediately appeal and he'll try to wrap it together with the September 18th. And he'll try every sort of uh, last minute uh, kind of Hail Mary to the appellate division, the Court of Appeals, the highest court in New York, and even his old buddies on the U.S. Supreme Court. But if they don't stop the music, in right away and i think they should not now it comes to the 18th and he pronounces sentence and i just if i can talk about that for just a sec there's a pretty robust debate kind of 50 50 about whether merchan gives him a few months or you know a lot of these cases don't result in time my best guess he will. There's all kinds of things Trump did before, besides the basic violations, including the the total obstreperous, contemptuous behavior with the gag order, et cetera. I think he gives him a couple months. Of course, he won't serve it until the whole thing goes up on appeal. But the last point I want to make is even if he gives him just a probationary sentence, we are equating that somehow with he gets away with uh, it's a basically walking it isn't being on probation uh, to in in a in a state court is a real restriction on liberty. You've got to ask permission to do a lot of things. So I just think that whatever happens, Trump is going to be either president or involved in the criminal justice system for the rest of his days, including being on probation. He says, "Can I take a trip?" They say, "No." He does it anyway. He can put him in jail immediately, and Mayor Chun just might. So anyway. Basically, the big thing is, will Trump be able to get a court of appeals, appellate division, or or New York, uh, or even the Supreme Court to freeze the sentencing itself? To me, it would, that would be a bad overreaching ruling. Nothing about the sentencing should be wrapped up in the immunity appeal that obviously he's going to take and he will be able to take uh, immediately. Harry Littman, you're talking Fed's YouTube channel, growing pretty rapidly right there. Going to hit, I think, half a million subscribers soon. Everyone should go to it because 
It's one of the places I go to freshen up on my own kind of legal skills because no one knows it like Harry. So you should all check it out as well. Talking Feds, YouTube, Harry Littman, always an honor to have you on our channel. Thanks, Ben. Likewise. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million together. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.